Hi, my name is Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you some tips, tools, and recipes tonight to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. I'm doing appetizers tonight. We have several on the menu and you can use them during the holiday season coming up or any time of the year and adapt them to however the season is for you. So we're going to start out, I have my oven preheated and we're going to start out with a pesto roll, pesto pinwheels, and we're going to do them into a, a, a kind of a, a the, theme shape that we're going to do for this holiday that we're preparing for tonight. And that might be Christmas. You could do it as a, as a pumpkin shape. You can do it in a summer shape, um, whatever suits the season. So we're going to start out with some uh, crescent roll dough that is in a sheet. You can buy it now in just one full sheet instead of the triangles. So it's easier that you don't have to uh, roll the dough together to press the seams so that they don't come apart. And I rolled it out just a little bit with a dough roller. And as I always say, when you're working with doughs, keep them chilled ahead of time and do the dough just at the last minute. So that's our dough. And we're gonna make a very simple, easy to do filling. And we have uh, some garlic and herb cream cheese here that's fairly soft. We're gonna put a whole container and that's what it looks like. See the garlic and onion or chive, any kind of flavored herbed cream cheese mixture. If you prefer to make your own, you could just use a softened cream cheese and add garlic and herbs. I like dill or oregano or something such as that. We're gonna take some dried classic pesto, which has basil and garlic and some olive oil. Sometimes it has pine nuts. We're gonna do about a teaspoon to start. You could certainly do this to taste. But we're gonna add just a little bit of pesto in here and blend it together until it's spreadable. We're gonna bake this in an oven and you could adapt this and double the recipe. That's what I like about these recipes. You can certainly make them two or three times the amount that you're gonna need, depending on, of course, how many people you're gonna be serving. So we're gonna take this mixture and spread it over your dough, like so. This smells really good with the garlic and the herbs. And of course, in the summertime, you can do your own pesto with your basil from the garden. Do you know you can freeze pesto? Um, in little, I do it in little ice cube trays. When you have a bounty of the basil in the summer months, you can just freeze it and then pop them out individually. Or uh, when they're frozen too, you can put them in an airtight container or a plastic bag in your freezer and you're ready to go. It's great on fresh pasta or homemade pasta or any kind of pasta. Actually, you can put anything on pasta and it tastes good. So I'm going to spread this out. It doesn't have to be too fussy or too fancy. You notice I'm not putting it right to the edge either because you're go we're going to be rolling this. So you don't want it all falling out. I'm going to roll it lengthwise like so. And that's about good. And then we're going to take some Parmesan cheese, just regular Parmesan cheese, and spread probably a quarter cup, exactly, approximately that much, you know, me and measuring. And then we're going to roll it up. Let's start over here. And kind of tighten it as you go. I'm pressing it down so you don't get any air inside. You can see what a perfectly exact science this is. And I'm always tucking the ends in as we go, like so. And then I'm going to grab my pan over here. I'm going to put it there. Can I, uh, let me see, I'll get a knife over here. I'm using uh, the oven. I'm going to, I think I'm going to turn this up to 375. 
And we're gonna make 12 of these. So cut it in half first. And then we're gonna get six out of these. So let's do three and three here. So we'll cut it in a quarters. If my math is correct, we're gonna do three on each of these. One, two, three. And you can see why you wanna have this dough chilled because it gets too soft and it gets crazy when you try and transfer it and when you try and bake it. So there's exactly 12. And then I'm gonna arrange them like so. Watch this. I'm gonna do it in a special shape. There's a method to my madness. Now let me know once you figure out what I'm making, because I have no idea. Okay, Angela, what do you think it is? It's a tree. You've seen this before. I haven't. Good guess. We're making a Christmas tree shape. Hmm. And of course, you can make a bigger tree or a smaller tree. We can do this. Is going to be the stem. We're going to pop this in the oven. Does that look like a tree? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, it's pretty sad looking. It's one of those endangered species. And you can see why. <laughs> so we're going to put this in the oven and cook it till it's done. Probably should be about 15 minutes or so. We'll put it right down. So now we're doing our second recipe. We're going to do the cheese doilies. And we're using Monterey Jack cheese. And you might remember we did these uh, in little cups earlier this season. So I'm doing little cubes, probably about an inch or so, and space them because they're gonna melt out and you don't want to have them all melt together. So depending on how many you want and the size, we're just gonna do little round discs about three or four inches. So we're gonna pop these right into the oven for about eight to nine minutes until they start getting a little brown and bubbly. And the secret to these is when you take them out of the oven, don't remove them from the pan right away. You want to let them set up. Otherwise, they're too melty and they won't stay in their shape. So let them set out for about three to four minutes till they just harden slightly and you'll be able to lift them right off the pan. So these are going into the oven at 375 for eight minutes. And we'll check on them in about eight minutes. And our little pesto pinwheels are already in the oven and they're browning up nicely. Now for a third recipe, these are great uh, recipes that you could do ahead of time. By the way, the cheese on the lace doilies, you could also do a Parmesan cheese if you wanted to instead of the Monterey Jack. Um, but I wouldn't use a cheese that's too uh, soft, like an American cheese wouldn't do well. Uh, also, a Gruyere is too stringy or a mozzarella, so stick with either the Parmesan cheese or the Monterey Jack cheese and you'll be good to go. So, our uh, Borsan cheese is a great recipe. Um, it's a favorite and I've been doing this for years because it's so versatile. And we have in here one 8 ounce packet of softened cream cheese. Everything good starts with cream cheese and then we're going to do about two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Now, not salad dressing. I would use a mayonnaise because it doesn't have as much vinegar in it as normal. So just two heaping teaspoons or a table, slight tablespoon of that. And then we're going to add some Dijon mustard. And these are a lot of pantry items that you might have other than the cream cheese mixture. I'm going to do about a teaspoon and a half of Dijon, just regular Dijon mustard. And let's do a garlic, fresh garlic. Um, you always have, you should have garlic in your pantry because it's one of those basics. I'm just taking a knife and depending on how much garlic you like, and those cloves are very small, so let's live on the edge and we'll do two. Two cloves of garlic is a good way to go. And with my garlic press. And don't forget to um, write in if you want the tools 
uh, or the recipes, I can give you access to all these tools. I love this garlic press because you don't have to peel your garlic, which is really convenient. And you can get right down to the nubs of all the little ones. See, and the peel wraps right around the foot like that. So it makes it convenient. And you press it in there, the whole clove, peel and all. It's really nothing like fresh garlic. We'll put that in there, and then once again, you pull it out, and there's the peel. That's all that's left. So how hard is that? I mean, you can buy the jarred stuff if it's convenient, but it's nothing to compare to fresh garlic. And then we're going to add some dill weed. This is a dill mix, and again, I can let you know where to get this. We're going to put about a teaspoon of dill mix. Uh, you can use regular dill weed if you'd like. Oh, this smells really good. So we're just going to blend this. I take this um, mixture and I put it in with some squeezed dry frozen spinach that you thaw out and you squeeze it dry. And then you stuff, add this mixture to it, the Borsan cheese mixture. And add the spinach and stuff it under the skin of a chicken breast and bake it. And boy, that's a great company dish to have. Very, very fragrant and flavorful. So we'll blend that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to add some chopped chives that I've done ahead. And you probably want a good teaspoon of fresh chives or to taste. I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to serve it with some crudités. When I plate it up, I'll let you see all of this together. So we're going to set that aside. And this is really good if you want to make this ahead of time, the night before, to give the flavors all a chance to blend in together. Um, but you can serve it just like this as well. It's also good with veggie crudite. Or um, I like the pita bread chips. They're very, very good with that. So that's it. We're going to... Um, plate this up for you and we'll be right back. We're going to do our fourth and fifth recipe. Be right back. Hi, welcome back. We're doing another recipe. We're going to do a roasted red pepper hummus. And again, this is another go-to recipe that you can double, triple, you could get buckets of this and make it if everybody, no matter what kind of crowd you have, everybody loves it. It's light and healthy. And very easy if you do it. You notice that I've done a lot of prep work ahead of time. And it makes entertaining so much easier and more accessible to you and your guests. You can actually enjoy your guests. So I have a container here of roasted red pepper hummus. And you can certainly do your favorite flavor. But I love this because it's colorful. It has a lot of flavor in it and the red peppers. And it's just nice for the fall season and the holiday season. And I like to use a fairly shallow dish. You can even use a, a round platter, if you would, or a rectangle one, and spread it very shallowly on the bottom, like so. It's kind of a layered dip, if you will, but it has so much substance to it that it's not going to spread too far. It'll stay put wherever you put it on a dish or a platter. So it makes a beautiful presentation. So that's the bottom layer. And then on top... I have all, I have some pepperoncini that I've chopped, and I love pepperoncini because you can keep them in the refrigerator and they're always ready to go. Some colorful, flavorful red onions that I've also chopped, and then some black cured olives or Greek olives. There's a lot of flavor in there as well. And then I'm going to check here just for a minute to see if our cheese doilies are done. So excuse my back for a minute. You don't want to miss out on these because they get very quickly go from brown to burnt. So excuse my back while I pull these out. And they are perfectly done. And see how they melted? And I'm going to just set them up here for about three minutes. And if my buddy Louisa could give me a heads up on that for about three minutes and then we'll plate them. Because you don't want to let them set too long or they get too hard. Um, so we're going to do this. And then over here, I'm just going to grab my feta cheese. I'm sorry for jumping around here. 
and we're going to start layering these toppings. So we're going to put some green pepperoncini. And I think I've mentioned before that I love the pepperoncini. They have a vinegary taste to them, and you can get them in any grocery store now. But I use these in place of um, jalapenos sometimes because they're not quite as hot and they are readily available. So we're going to put probably a, not even a whole teaspoon, depending on the surface area and how much you've made. I'm going to spread the red onions. Now look at the color already on this. It's so pretty. And then some black olives. And I always make extra because I love all these combos in a salad with some Greek chicken or I, you know, if I was doing this, I'd pop some lemon and herb chicken into the oven along with everything else and have yourself a nice pita sandwich the next day. And then this is cubed feta cheese. Again, very accessible. We're going to sprinkle that on the top. Just like so. And it doesn't matter how many onions, how many olives, it's just to taste. And I've served this with pita breads that I've made little wedges. You can toast them or just have your guests open them and fill them inside. And these are little Melba rounds that are perfectly crisp. You could also do like crackers. And I have a tray here of some veggies as well. Some celery, carrots, you could use snow peas roasted, um, or, I'm sorry, red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. Very healthy, very light, and certainly colorful and easy to do. So that's our little take on a layered dip, a roasted red pepper hummus. We're going to set this over here with the crudite. And I'm going to tell you, talk about that little bow. I think I'm going to put that on to my um, Christmas tree pinwheels and I'm going to put it over here and now I'm going to take these cheese doilies and I'm going to take these off of here and you can see they're very pliable and I'm going to set them over here onto the paper and we're going to let these cool for a few minutes and then we're going to put a topping on them. Wonderful guacamole and sour cream topping, but they do have to cool first. So we're going to do those. And you can certainly do these in little bowls like we did before. And we've got our pinwheels. We have us about five more minutes in the oven right now. So they should be fine in about five minutes. So those are our little lace doilies. And they're going to be perfectly cooled in about two minutes. I'm going to clear the decks. And I'm going to make our fifth recipe. And while we're waiting for those in the oven, I think I'll show you how I'm going to plate my borsan cheese. I have crackers. I have our crudite here that we could also use and our spreader. And I'm going to grab our bowl of borsan cheese and just fill it up. And I don't like to set too much filling or dip out at room temperature. I prefer to use a smaller dish and refill it during the night. And this is totally enough for two little trays. Always have a cute spreader to put with it and next to our little crudite. So we're good to go with that. And then I'm going to make our fifth and final dish and you'll, I'll come back and finish off these cheese doilies and show you everything at the end. But I'm going to grab my ingredients here and my tray. This is one of my favorite things to do. And when you see this, you're going to say, why didn't I think of that? This is a little thing that you could do in the summer months. Our veggies are so available all year round. I'm going to put a little of your favorite dip, a little neater than I did, 
and just fill a little bit on the bottom. This happens to be a ranch. Sometimes I do a combination of ranch and blue cheese dressing. And we're just going to fill up these little cups on the bottom only. And add some veggies. Okay, I'll do that more on that. And then you just take your pre-sliced veggies and put a selection. You could do snow peas in here. I mentioned green and red peppers. We're going for color and crunch. And everybody has their own individual little veggie cup. How cool is that? It's fun. It's easy. It's accessible to everybody. can take what they'd like. You can even set a separate tray of these veggies on the side so people can take their favorite veggies and put them in their own little individual cups and there's no double dipping because you know how that goes. Everybody has somebody there that does double dipping and it's not good. So I'll put a few more. So think about the what's fresh in your grocery store this time of year. Of course, you always have access to like cherry tomatoes. I put them on a skewer with the cherry tomato on the top. You could do all different colorful tomatoes in the summer months. And even now you can get them all over. Sometimes a little roasted potatoes are good, but you get the idea. It's fun, it's easy, and we can serve the balance of these right alongside. Um, these are good, the crudite here is nice to go with the roasted red pepper hummus and also our uh, borsan cheese. Uh, and um, we're gonna finish our cheese doilies, check on our pinwheels in the oven, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're finishing up for our finale. Let me review what we've done so far. We have our roasted red pepper hummus with feta, black olives, um, some pepperoncini, and I garnish the edges just to bring out the colors with the chopped chives and some uh, little diced red peppers. Then we have our borsan cheese with the dill and garlic and Dijon mustard and mayonnaise. And again, don't forget to uh, send me your requests. I'm happy to send the recipes to you. I get so many requests for the recipes and the tools and the ideas, and I'm so happy to share with you. Um, you can also serve veggies with these. We have a beautiful, colorful little veggie dishes here, our individual veggie cups that you can serve with any kind of dressing. We used ranch, but you could do blue cheese. I'd separate them and label them. Not everybody's quite fond of blue cheese. You could do a creamy Italian or whatever your favorite is. Um, start with a scratch mix from a healthy yogurt and do your own blend of herbs and garlic and um, you're good to go. These are great for the kids too because they can take them with them. You can put them in little uh, paper cups and they can take them out with them um, and they're great for picnics as well. So you can do all, bring all your dressing ahead of time and all your cut veggies and assemble them when you get there. We've taken our pinwheel tree out of the oven. I'll get to that in a minute, but look at our cheese doilies. We're gonna fill these with some guacamole and I bought prepared guacamole because it's really good. And you can see how they've cooled. These cheese doilies have hardened up and they've cooled. So you want to make sure they're cool before you do this. And I've transferred them onto a colorful platter. And you just put a, an exact dollop on each one. And you can do them bigger or smaller, or whatever you think your guests would like and what you're in the mood to do. And then in here... I have a mixture of cream cheese and sour cream, and I add the softened cream cheese, or you can soften it in the microwave or leave it out for room temperature for about an hour. And I find that the cream cheese stabilizes the sour cream and makes it a little bit more manageable so that you can actually get a nice shape on here. And I've added some Mexican flavorings to this. Again, I have a Mexican seasoning that I purchase, and you can get that information from me, or you can use just a taco seasoning mix or an enchilada, whatever your favorite packaged seasoning mix is, and it's probably three ounces of cream cheese to about, I'd say, half a cup of sour cream, and you just put it right on the top. It's fun to do. 
I mean, you don't have to be, you don't have to be fussy. They're homemade, but I think that looks pretty good so far. And then your favorite dried salsa, whatever you have handy. And I would do these probably right before you serve them because you don't want the cheese to get a little rubbery. And already you can see the colors of the holidays coming through with the red and the green and the white. It's just a beautiful, easy, simple recipe that is absolutely fabulous. It is so good. These would be good poolside in the summer too, but who's doing that in December in New England, right? Not I. We could do a whole platter of these, a great big tray. And that's what I love about these recipes that I'm sharing with you. These are my go-tos that I've been doing because you can multiply these and do them as, like I said, as many or as few as you want. And they're all different. We have the healthy, we have the gourmet, we have the Mediterranean, we have European, we have the Mexican. We've got everything here, healthy. And um, you're going to have something for everybody, too. So we're going to put these out here. And I'm going to grab our pinwheel that I've plated for you. And I'm going to show you how it looks. And again, you could use, do several of these and put them out with different fillings. Now, you could start with the cream cheese and chive base. You could even use this borsan cheese that we made and do something like that. Um, you could do, a, I've done um, a Reuben style with this as well. A Reuben filling, you could do a ham and cheese filling in here. Um, mushrooms and shaved steak. Uh, blue cheese and steak and red onions on the top. You could do any combination that you like. Um, Pepperoni and cheese, my kid's favorite. They love to do that. So use your imagination and the preference that your family likes. And it's a winner. So that's our, you can see the shape of a Christmas tree. I cut a little star out of some American cheese. And I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we did a roasted red pepper, or a red pepper bowl. I keep calling it roasted, but it's really not. And let me disassemble this for you. This is a fun thing to do for garnishing. And you know the ribs that you have on your red peppers? You know how it's um, curly like this on the top? And I've heard that the male pepper has three humps on it and the female pepper has four bumps on it. So that's how you tell. Or it could be the opposite, but who's going to tell, right? So you take that little curve and you just cut almost a heart shape out of it. And I did two. And... I take this, or if you have a round little cookie cutter, or a round, um, this is a, a corn more, and I put them together like so, so that they're touching the points, and I press it down, and I cut it in the middle, and then I cut another segment, you can see it fits right in there, and that's the center of the bow, and then you just take some of the strips and cut little ribbons. And this is going to be our little red pepper bow that we're going to put on top of our Christmas tree. Should we put it in the middle? Yeah. And then we're going to put this here. And doesn't that look like a red bow for Christmas? My mother always said, don't play with your food and look at what I do. I just think it adds so much. These little things add a lot of extra to your party. So that's our uh, pep pesto pinwheel, our little cheese crisp with guacamole and sour cream, our homemade borsan, our layered roasted red pepper. And again, you can use any kind of hummus that you love and dress it up to whatever color. I've seen pumpkin hummus done around the fall season, and those are great with cinnamon, a little cinnamon crisp that you can use for dippers. Absolutely amazing. And then our little um, veggie cups as well. So I hope you try. Oh, we have a question over here. Louisa. Hi, Louisa. Hi there. I have a question. Can you make the pinwheels ahead of time and freeze them and then take them out and reheat it? You could. I would bake them first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally bake them and wrap them really well. Um, my thought on that is they're so easy to do. You could even prepare them the night before and refrigerate them. And then put them in the oven and bake them ahead of time if you need that extra time, too. Um, 
yeah, you, you could freeze them, but they, they're quick and easy to do, too. So give it a try. Um, I'm not sure. You saw a lot of the pre-prep work that I did. So if time's an issue. And get your friends into the kitchen. If they ask you what you can bring um, for the dinner evening that you're doing, say bring an apron. You know, bring an extra pair of hands. And I know my friends would do that. And it's, it's a fun time in the kitchen. There's not enough time to spend with your family and friends. So make good use of it. So I hope you try these recipes. I hope you have a wonderful and festive holiday season. Thank you for watching and may the fork be with you.